Welcome to Date Rocket Science. I'm Adam Balkin. With the recent discovery of flowing liquid on Mars, it's been a big month in science news. We'll bring you the latest and check in on how you're making your mark in science, technology, engineering, and math this fall in this episode. Before humans travel to Mars, you may see this little guy there. Students from the University of West Virginia head to D.C. to show off their award-winning automaton. In New York City, teens from homeless shelters are getting a special tour of the New York Aquarium and learning about the stem that goes into the care, feeding, and breeding of sharks, stingrays, seals, and much more. And at the University of Texas, students are going green as they build what could be a prototype of the home of the future in hopes of taking home top prize in the U.S. Department of Energy's solar decathlon. All that and more in this episode of It Ain't Rocket Science, part of Time Warner Cable's Connect a Million Minds initiative aimed at connecting you with science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities in your community. Now back to the news of the hour, NASA's discovery of flowing water on Mars and what it could mean for you. It's a revelation that could change our view of the universe. With the discovery of liquid water on Mars, scientists believe it could lead to the discovery of life on the red planet in the form of Martian microbes. Mars is not the dry, arid planet that we thought of in the past. Today we're going to announce that under certain circumstances, liquid water has been found on Mars. We are now at a point technologically with you know, over 50 years of successful space flight that we have the capability to go there, ask this question of is there life on Mars and answer it. It also opens the door for future human exploration of Mars with the potential of using the liquid water to create a habitat, oxygen or even rocket fuel. Plans are in the works for a manned mission to Mars by 2030, but for now, NASA is keeping its distance from the newly discovered liquid assets for fear of contaminating the samples with microbes from Earth. While it'll still be a while until we get humans to the Red Planet, NASA is already working on the next step in space travel. We caught up with a group of students who were recently awarded $100,000 for their work on a robot that could return samples from Mars. This may very well be the next evolution in Martian rovers. It's the winning bot from NASA's 2015 Sample Return Robot Challenge. Robotic sample return technology will enable us to return samples from Mars to Earth so we can analyze them in laboratories here and learn more about Mars, our planet, and other planets. A team of student engineers from West Virginia University received a $100,000 prize for their work on this autonomous robot which was put through several sample collecting challenges. I, I didn't expect this at all. Yeah, it was just a surreal experience. I was in charge of the navigation systems, helping the robot navigate out into the field and then return home safely. I designed the electronics. Um, there are other members dedicated to the mechanical design and different aspects of the software design. So everybody was involved in a very pivotal part. Yeah, it, ju it just felt really great to see, you know, uh, all of our hard work come together and actually work. The challenge is a chance to apply their engineering know-how to real-world problems. And this time NASA is laying out this challenge. It's a real problem that will benefit NASA in the long run. So it's really exciting. And uh, so we're just really learning by trying to tackle the problem. It's an option. This is something I can do. I love the research in. I love being able to build something that I can see goes out and works. It's a fun experience. And who knows, perhaps they'll be working at NASA on the next mission to Mars in the not so distant future. While robots may be the next visitors to Mars, we'll need programmers and software engineers here on Earth to get them moving. And here in New York City, the focus is on getting those would-be coders ready. Earlier this month, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio announced his commitment to making computer science education available to all city public school students over the next 10 years, adding New York to the growing number of cities across the country investing in software engineering education. Computer science has become increasingly accessible in the last few years, with dozens of nonprofits across the country committed to preparing the next generation of programmers. One of those nonprofits called ScriptEd is focused on teaching coding skills to students at under-resourced schools. 
That's what's happening here at the Coalition School for Social Change in New York City Public School. It's amazing. You can build your own. You can learn how to build your own website from scratch, and you learn how all this stuff. And it's not only just for websiting; it's also for roboting and anything that you would like to do with electronics. The fact that you can tell something like a computer how to do something, and they will actually do it, and it'll make a product that's really awesome in the end. It's like, oh, I did that. Teaching students about software development and computer science will give them a huge leg up um, in the 21st century economy. Everything that we do in today's job market depends on technology. The students build and design their own websites and even get a shot at paid summer internships with local tech companies. I think that motivates students um, even more because they're interested in paid summer jobs, they're interested in building things with what they've learned. The entire world is built on software right now. The same way everybody's not going to be a writer, but they know all the basics of English, makes sense to me that everybody doesn't know, everybody isn't a software engineer necessarily, but they'll know the basics of how all of these, this technology around them works. With just a few weeks in the program, these students say their goals for the future are already changing. I never really thought I would be interested in like computer science or coding, but once the class started a few weeks ago, I was like, okay, now I'm majoring in this in college. I feel like we learn a lot of stuff because we actually get to make our own web page. So yeah, like it gives you a lot of opportunities. ScriptEd is currently in 13 high schools around New York City providing an entry into the computer science industry to nearly 300 students. In many fields of study, there's the theoretical and the practical. And if you're pursuing a career in coding, there's nothing more practical than a boot camp for potential programmers, especially when you can do it in front of prospective employers. Anthony Pascal has a story. In the 21st century economy, the need for a workforce with computer science and programming skills is higher than ever. Boot camps like this one provide would-be coders with an entry point into the job market. This is so different than teaching like a physics class, which has been the same for 200 years. Um, it's changing every month, literally. Um, and so because we take on the challenge of doing that, I think we're successful. And students know us, you know of, of us as someone who is on the cutting edge. Full Stack Academy is a 17 week programming boot camp. During the program, students learn the latest in software engineering from mastering JavaScript to understanding algorithms. Once armed with a fluency in computer programming languages, the students are tasked with creating their own web-based applications. It's a rigorous workload, but company founders say the job placement rate for full-stack graduates is nearly 97 percent. I'm not going to say guaranteed, but it's about as close to a guarantee as you can get. We visited Full Stack Academy during a hiring day. Before sitting down and chatting with prospective employers, students strutted their stuff. It is a online digital audio workstation. So the web is a really powerful platform that we wanted to enable users to uh, you know, make music with because it doesn't require you to download any software or spend any money purchasing things. Um, you know, it's really pretty free and allows users to just create what they want. For some students, the decision to take up coding meant taking their education and career in a completely new direction. I was doing a summer internship at an international law firm in Korea and that was when um, I found out about the whole programming world and uh, I started teaching myself some coding through online resources such as Code Academy and I really fell in love with the problem solving aspect of it. Where traditional education falls short, boot camps like this are picking up the slack and closing the STEM skills gap. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Anthony Pascal. All right, we have to stop for a quick break, but coming up. A new movie sheds light on the illegal wildlife trade through the eyes of animal rights activists who go undercover to expose the clandestine practice. We'll talk with the filmmakers about the importance of conservation and their use of advanced technology to tell their story. And the message of conserve and protect doesn't stop there. We'll check in with teens across the country who are getting up close and personal with wildlife, all in an effort to gain a better appreciation of the natural world. And later, it's the Super Bowl of solar technology. We check out how students at the University of Texas are working to create the home of the future. To find hands-on science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities in your community, visit theconnectory.org, made possible by Time Warner Cable's Connect a Million Minds.